you might have heard many people's developing some kinds of sensitivity after having prawns yeah. and uh, allergies skin reactions mm. it's mainly because uh, it's mentioned in ayurveda it's tridosha kopak that is it 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 provokes tridoshas there's too many cosmetics companies that are not truly organic but are portraying themselves to be organic the general public has knowledge only about a few ingredients to name for example sulfates mm. paraben free but what about the rest there are 1300 to 5000 ingredients that can equally be toxic causing internal issues hormonal issues miscarriages reproductive mm. issues okay. this is listed in european union and these list is banned in european union which is prevalently used in most of the companies even it is organic natural brands in india in us today's episode with dr nena is our first episode on ayurved where we did cover the basics of ayurved the abc's of it but also tried covering some advanced aspects of ayurved that's an extremely vast subject so it's a fantastic 101 episode for you in this age of cosmetics and skin care and hair care where we're putting all sorts of products on our skin and on our hair without understanding the long term effects of these chemical products i personally feel conversations like this are extremely important where ancient knowledge comes back to the forefront ancient knowledge is celebrated once again and ancient knowledge is understood and applied in the real world for real world problems Trust me this episode will be an eye opener from a cosmetics perspective so if you're in the chase for better skin and hair firstly know that India has a lot of secrets when it comes to cosmetics and secondly keep your mind and your heart open to learning in this particular episode i love supporting entrepreneurs like dr nena who are running noble businesses honest businesses businesses that are difficult to run because massive companies out there in the world of cosmetics despise people like her they do not like the honest mission that people like her are on on youtube if we ever call out one of these massive companies we usually sent a legal notice so doing this episode for me was a way to celebrate an entrepreneur like her she's someone who's guided me in my own skincare journey and here was dr nena explaining ayurved and explaining the cosmetic side of india's ancient sciences on this episode of t r s after the episode make sure you go follow dr nena and vanora organics by clicking on the links given down below but for now enjoy this very special health oriented cosmetics oriented episode of t r s Dr Nena thank you for entering my life because i think my skin hair mind all of it improved after that one conversation with you we had long ago so it was bound to happen this podcast was bound to happen welcome to trs for the first time thank you so much ranveer i'm so humbled to be here to be a part of your show no no i think you're <laughs> so much to share with the world uh honestly the last 2 years in my life have been very transformative because i've adopted yoga i've adopted yes. ayurved yes. uh and you can only get ayurved experts like yourself to talk about organic skin care on a podcast like this i feel too many people know nowadays that organics and ayurved work well on the internet so there's a lot of non qualified people talking about it yes uh i'd actually first like for you to talk about what you've studied so that people know that they're listening to an expert yes uh ranveer i have graduated in bams ayurvedic medicine and have done post graduation in ayurvedic psychiatry okay. that very few people know about okay that, that is a medicine specialization in psychiatry okay yeah and so much of how you look on the outside is actually related to your mind as yes, well yes definitely uh but then also there's always hacks you can use on your face on your hair to enhance the way you look yes. uh personally i'm an on screen personality so my skin my hair all these things matter to me a lot yes, yes. um but i think we're living in an age where everyone cares about yeah, it yeah. uh why do you think 
people should be caring about the skin and the hair in the first place yes this is a very good question and uh, there are so many controversies or conflicts when we talk about taking care of the skin especially uh, okay. skin usually people say that uh, oh it's we would uh, choose natural beauty why you want to be uh, beautiful like that there mm. is a concept like that but um, when it comes to uh, the skin it's totally we all know it's a reflection of one's mind it's one it's one's confidence it's one's self esteem it's what it's one's self respect that is reflecting on your skin what we see from outside we, you know people say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, beholder. yes that is a concept uh, where we perceive that is a perceivable aspect of beauty mm. what people see about us but the most important thing is what we feel about ourselves how beautiful we feel about ourselves you know when you say how beautiful we feel about ourselves even our feelings are actually decided by what's happening biologically inside yes, your body definitely definitely as you said that we need to enhance beauty right okay. why there should be a need to enhance beauty because the similar way we are we are eating food we are taking a good diet to do what to nurture the body physically the same way we are doing yoga we are practicing pranayama meditation to achieve what inner peace yes to better our mind mm. to get to a higher level so betterment is a goal knowing or unknowingly it is inbuilt in the human instinct mm. so that way we need to nurture each and every element of our human life whether it may be mind body skin it's very important because skin is the largest sense organ of our body yeah. and it is the barrier of external and internal world yeah yeah uh you know what i also definitely want to say is once i graduated out of engineering college a lot of my opinions about the world changed because i graduated from engineering into media yeah. which is so much about how you look and so much definitely. about uh, what you feel on the inside engineering is very mathematical yeah. it's a problem solving so i remember having a lot of pimples then also mm. but uh once i started my youtube journey i got very serious about my body building because i want my body to look good mm. so i got into a ketogenic diet i used to eat a lot of red meat uh for some reason i used to eat a lot of spicy food also uh and i didn't know how my diet is actually affecting my skin and hair but i ended up getting a lot of acne uh especially in this one phase where i went very ham on my keto i did a very serious keto diet um eat a lot of fat eat a lot of meat yes and i broke out so badly mm. that there was 6 months of my life where i didn't leave my house mm. and i was recording videos mm. um you know very embarrassed to do that even in front of camera but my point of saying all this is i lost the confidence to actually yes. leave my house yeah. uh it was such a dark mental health phase for me and i found it crazy that my skin is actually affecting my mental health so i had two goals at that point one is fix my skin uh in order to fix my mental health mm. and second was to talk about it online yeah. because i realized i wasn't alone mm. so many people in my gym mm. so many of my relatives mm. are, were dealing with adult acne people think yeah. you have acne only till the time you're mm. a teenager mm. but pimples actually happen to people my age as well yeah. uh and i'd i'd only say probably at 28 29 mm. that was a point where i really figured okay this is the kind of diet that works for me this is the kind of food that doesn't work for me and at its core it was a lot of meditation and yoga that really i think fixed my skin and my hair yes um i want to actually begin this conversation by talking about pimples mm. because i think it's the most common topic for yeah. both the millennial generation and the gen z's yes where do we begin this pimple topic especially from an organic ayurvedic perspective yeah yeah so uh, there are two aspects ranveer when it comes to the pathogenesis of pimple what we say how we is related to the mind as you said there was a lot of stress going on in your life yeah so stress actually induces a hormone called cortisol that everybody knows it's it causes the fight or flight uh, reaction in the body so the same thing is uh, initiates a precursor called crh cortisol releasing hormone so this crh actually binds with the oil producing glands of your skin especially face face skin is very sensitive or tender compared to the other parts of your body so this binds to the oil producing glands and it ex produces excessive oil and thus when it combines with the external atmospheric 
pollution and other uh, stuff this including the lifestyle pimples acne vulgaris happens so stress hormone has a direct connection to the initiation of pimples you know how people love korean skin care for korean mask like one yeah. someone i dated had actually got me into korean masks <laughs> and it's good it's nice and all that uh but i also feel ayurved has its own secrets mm. when it comes to skin care skin masks etc yeah definitely is that one of the general solutions yes because uh, ayurveda is a treasure of uh, such uh, formulations that is uh, working on indian skin particularly okay because uh, when we talk about ayurveda it was particularly made 5000 years ago it was written 5000 years ago with the only intention of curing disease or uh, preventing diseases there was no business perspective there is not no fancy it was only for the good of human beings mm. so when it comes to uh, beautifying things saundarya prasadaga that is a, a beauty enhancing medicines are so many formulations are there in ayurveda and uh, this is uh, in the form of paste lay pass applications and all available there and what we have noticed when it comes to the beauty enhancing treatments in ayurveda is they are in the form of formulations it is a mix of combination of different herbal medis- drugs okay. that means uh, we are not using a single uh, jadi buti or a herb for a particular disease okay. it's a bunch of things put it together it is a bunch of things put together in a particular proportion okay. proportion in a right balance so that the formulation is balanced in itself okay. that is the difference from herbal medicine and ayurved Okay. herbal ingredients and ayurved so if if a particular ingredient has uh, uh, ushna properties that means hot potency there should there should be another drug that can neutralize the harmful effects of hot potency in that formulation itself so that the formulation is balanced in its own got it okay um you know there's a lot of people listening to this wanting a home remedy right now yeah. and i know it's not easy for you to give a home remedy because everyone's skin is different doshas are different yeah. uh you can't truly generalize with a remedy hmm. but can i still ask you for a bit of a home remedy yes home remedies are now in internet <laughs> with so many home remedies we can see some may be working for some people some may not work but there is a huge danger that i would like to uh, sure. uh, share with you is that this particular uh, ingredients uh, using in a raw form can actually irritate and um, cause harm to your skin if directly applied okay so uh, we can't uh, say that this particular home remedy is good so that's why ayurveda has mentioned certain processes uh, of paga that means processing um, in the uh, particular if that is oil soluble we need to process it in oil if it is water soluble there is a particular way of extracting the best of that ingredient so that processing makes the um formula very um irritant free okay and um, it won't irritate the skin so that so when it comes to home remedies it's not advisable to use a home remedy as such for an indefinite period of time um so basically there's no answer to like a generalized home yes. remedy for acne because everyone's skin is different uh i'll probably share my own experience again mm. this is my subjective experience and may not even work for everyone mm-hmm. um this is just related to my pimple journey okay uh for me the big switch uh was actually going vegetarian because i feel like that cut out a lot of pitta mm. and i still eat a lot of red meat uh and i went vegetarian for the sake of my meditation so as the meditation goes deeper anyway that you know you get a glow on your face because of the meditation yeah. and all that mm-hmm. so that was another factor um i noticed that even after going vegetarian i started missing processed cheese and milk a lot and for me those two things used to irritate my stomach it may not irritate everyone i later found out that i've become lactose intolerant in life which you can develop in time yeah. then that can also cause acne mm-hmm. uh and i वैसे भी i avoid a lot of table sugar like i don't eat any table sugar i don't eat uh, too much processed food so for me it was very diet centric uh with to kind of remove the acne but to really enhance my skin uh i do use a particular ayurvedic paste that mm. has been mm. given to me mm. by you mm. <laughs> so uh, that's one aspect of it yeah. again i don't want to talk about it because it's too subjective to me mm. um the second is um 
ऑल माई प्राणायाम माई योगा uh and always kind of just keeping a track of my diet and eating mm. a lot of raw food this is what has helped me mm. and i still get pimples once in a while it's mm. just a lot lesser mm. than it used to be mm. this yes. i'm giving so that people just close the loop on these questions because i know what it's like mm. having that many pimples on your face mm. and looking at youtube videos for remedies mm. you're willing to look at a thousand videos just yes. to gain that some new information yeah, yeah. So, doctor, would you like to add anything in this whole pimples yes. problem? Yes, because uh, that is the very instinct in me that led to the development of my brand, as you know. Yeah. Because when I, when people like you and many uh, many patients used to come to me with uh, issues like this, and they wanted products that that they can easily use that 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 can easily glide into their daily routine. So when I looked into the market, I couldn't find and pick and choose one. Recommend them, recommend them to uh, recommend any of the product because the those ingredients what we I was looking for was accompanied with a lot of synthetic uh, elements yeah. and chemicals that could actually harm more. Yeah. Than benefit the skin. I also feel that when you're a subject expert who becomes an entrepreneur. You yeah. become a student even more deeply. Definitely. Ah, uh, once again, because you have to deep dive into your subject again and figure out how to like yes. uh, make the masses understand the yeah. work that you're doing. Yes. Ah, uh, I love that you brought up this whole thing about modern day cosmetics because there's too many cosmetics companies that are not truly organic but are portraying themselves to be organic. I'm not even talking about the old world companies that will probably sue you and me for even naming them. Yes. Ah, uh, but they're famous companies that everyone's heard about. Mm. we can't name them i'm talking about some of the new age brands as well yeah who uh, portray that they're organic but they're truly not so let's talk about that because yeah. i know that your skin is like basically a second mouth yeah. whatever you put on it it ends up eating yes definitely so uh, let's talk about it yes when it comes to the organic and natural skin care available now uh, there are so many things people are aware uh right now regarding for example sulfates mm. paraben free people general masses even look for sulfate free paraben free shampoos or other skin care but uh what about the rest there are 1300 to 5000 ingredients that can equally be toxic causing internal issues hormonal issues miscarriages reproductive mm. issues Okay. this is listed in european union and these list is banned in european union which is prevalently used in most of the companies even it is organic natural brands in india in us this is a huge market where we only have knowledge about the general public have knowledge only about a few ingredients to name like it should be sulfate what about free? the rest yes mm, silicone free yes, yes. Uh, people think that if it is sulfate free silicone free everything is fine it's not but okay. on on the label how do you spot a bad ingredient that's quite difficult ranveer when it comes to i i think that it is the duty of the formulator formulators those who manufacture that is because there are so many loopholes as far as our indian um, system uh, uh, regulating the cosmetics is concerned there are so many loopholes okay. so we can't simply portray ourselves as transparency in labels that doesn't matter because that is not about that that is picking and choosing and knowing the ingredients being thoughtful about the source of the ingredients and uh, putting it in the right place that is all that matters but we can't generalize a rule and ask the public to say if you look for this ingredient avoid this we can't even say that because mm. it's not necessary that it should be listed on the label okay that's a that's by law you don't have to list everything on the label yes but there are so many malpractices happening it is it is required to be listed on the label but um where should where does this ingredient come from this supplier or uh, cosmetic raw material supplier industry is huge okay. that they give you the list of ingredients with this kind of desirable effects there are uh, thousands of ingredients available in indian market as well as abroad but and and what the cream and um, cosmetic manufacturing industries do, does is they pick and choose among the desired effects that bringing the product but how where the uh, ingredient is sourced what is the actual process going on to bring in that in effect in the ingredient that is unknown 
Okay, um, so I'm assuming that these cosmetic companies are okay keeping these ingredients in because overall it might reduce the cost of creating that same cream or face wash yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, now, the thing is, if you go high, fully organic with mm. your uh, mm. product, mm. probably the cost of manufacturing it increases. Am I right? Yes, yes, definitely. That's the basic logic. That is one logic, okay. Ranveer. That is only one aspect. That is about cost management. cost cutting because if you have a raw material when i talk about raw material i am referring to the structure what the cream is made of the structure what is the gel is made of okay. irrespective of the ingredient part active part that is what where ayurveda organic or other uh, actives come in so i am not talking about that first i am talking to about the base of a product okay. how the structure of cream how the structure of shampoo is made of in that as you said um uh, there is a huge uh, kind of cost cutting happening because the chemical synthetic alternatives are uh, 50 times of lesser price yeah. when it comes to uh, natural or organic ingredients and also there are no substitutes that are readily available so that we can bring in the structure of a cream or, or a particular gel like that yeah. that is researched as far as we are concerned Uh, we have researched some natural alternatives so that the texture and the uh, form matches international quality that is actually a huge level of research going on in okay. that um you know the sad thing is everyone who's our age is only going to see these effects in like 30 40 years mm -hmm. they'll keep using these products yeah um uh, you know no matter how many people are even seeing this podcast there's a lot of people who are still going to go for those same old school products because that's what they've used all mm -hmm. their life mm -hmm. but the effects will only be seen 30 40 years later and you're yes. saying that there are actually even reproductory organ effects and there are could there also be like carcinogens in all these yes things? definitely okay so you can get cancer you can get reproductive issues because of these things you're putting on your skin and your hair every yes. day yes but and another matter of uh, uh, fact is that how can we attribute to a skin cancer developing 5 years later to a cream you have used 2 or 3 months mm. in this period mm. so the studies available are also uh, very uh, less we can uh, and uh, if you search on a particular ingredient in a cream you are using if you go to the google what does it say uh this ingredient is um can be used on the skin and this pr this brings in this kind of a benefit it gives whitening to your skin uh side effects are not reported or unknown mm. what does that mean side effects are not known so people think there is no side effect mm. but it is not that because these are popping up these ingredients and these things are only popping up and the side effects will be known only after 5 or 10 years mm. okay uh so all in all i hope that at least listeners of the show move into more organic choices yes, yes definitely um is there again a generalized solution for people like i think people just need to be more educated as consumers yes, right that's yes. the basis of this conversation yes uh, but uh, uh, to some more uh, extent people are more educated right now people know that organic is good okay we need to move towards organic and natural products but whom to trust mm how what is the criteria of organic these things are the main cons concern oh. right now what's the criteria criteria in the sense these uh, it uh, when you talk about organic uh, it's it's not about mixing and matching of a particular group of ingredients okay. that is what is happening in pure organic labels if if some brand is doing organic well that is certified also suppose they only make use of some organically certified ingredients to bring in particular formulations and on the label they'll write organic product yes organic i'm not okay. i'm also not uh, defending that uh no i'm not saying that they are not organic they might be organic but the deep concept is not there okay. why the ingredient is used what kind of ingredients can benefit the skin okay what about the efficacy that's where my life works mm. we researched the treasure of formulations available in ayurveda to bring the best out of it fitting the modern world individual okay that should easily glide into the routine that is my first point and also to give no harm at all okay. i can assure that there is 100% uh, 
natural ingredients used without depending upon any synthetic or chemical fragrances i think the downside for you is you're playing a more difficult business game if yes, i'm not mistaken definitely but it's worthy of it and it's rewarding to ranveer because okay. the kind of response i am and the feedbacks we are getting is actually worth it because people are saying that it's transforming their lives okay um you know this is why i respect you because again the doctor side of you has turned into an entrepreneur yeah. uh, and, and you've not turned into an entrepreneur for money yes uh, which is exactly the kind of guest i want on my show a subject expert who's actually doing something with yeah, the subject yeah. because anyone can be like a bag full of knowledge and not really change the world through that knowledge yes so uh in saying that i still want to extract some more knowledge from you so i uh All in all, with skincare, it's very subjective. Just go hyper organic with the cosmetics you're using, and try understanding how your dietary decisions affect the quality of your skin. Mm. And if you can, then do some yoga, do some breathing exercises, do some uh, meditation. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anything else you would like to add to the skincare conversation? Okay, uh, maybe we can talk about the aging process okay. that begins from the day one of your life. <laughs> okay yes you because know, many of my friends i'm 1993 born so like i'm 30 now uh, a lot of my friends guys and girls are going for like botox mm. are going for plastic surgery in like my industry yeah. and uh, people are just very very concerned with how their face is changing how their mm. hair is changing mm. um without knowing what's actually going on in their body yes. biologically Yes. Anyway, let's go, doctor. Tell yes. us. Yes, because uh, this is an alarming thing because we seldom know about the effects that are waiting for us. Okay. Yeah. So when we talk about that, um, people are concerned about their looks, and they should be. They should be to some extent. We say you now there are uh, when we there are two extremes. Always there should be a middle path. Madhyama margam prashastam. Okay. As you say in in uh, Buddhist. uh theory is also it is also always advisable in whatever we do to follow the middle path so that is very important we should be worried about the looks because that itself is a reflection of our personality uh the way people think about us uh what we actually uh, get appraisal about so that is important and we have remedies in ayurveda for that as well in uh, in the literatures uh, we can see that every decade of your life there are certain biological factors that are deteriorating or reducing so we should work on that okay. ayurveda is the science of longevity okay can, can you expand on the biological yes, yes. factors yes yes i will talk about that in the first 10 years of your life um that is balya is deteriorating the uh, balya means the childhood okay childhood is deteriorating so uh, in the similar way when it comes to your skin and appearance in the uh, second decade of your life uh, growth is deteriorating in the third decade that means 20 to 30 years uh, prabha your luster is deteriorating so we should do things to enhance that and ayurveda has laid down innumerable remedies for bringing in the luster back how do you do it yeah that is why that is there are so many ingredients um, like uh, manjishta ashwagandha yashti madhu uh, indian madder uh, licorice then uh, so many uh, like saffron so many ingredients to name the perfect blend of these items in a particular formulation in a particular form that is very very important and where because we are we, uh, if we uh, we make some paste of it apply on your face that won't work because the skin has lipid soluble as well as uh, water soluble ingredients that has to be given yeah. for penetration i think this is why ayurvedic doctors exist in the first place like everyone assumes that through home remedies mm. that they can find on youtube that yeah. their problems will be yeah. solved but it's actually way no. more complex than definitely, that definitely definitely okay whenever we are in into that science when you are exposed to that science we are exposed to the philosophy of it the concepts includes the not only in finding out the right medicine or right ingredient that has to be rightly processed and applied in such a way that it is to the point okay. people usually say ayurveda is slow acting it's not if done in right point right place and right proportion 
Okay. It can easily cure things. Okay. What uh, deteriorates in your thirties? In thirties, uh, it is the luster, prabha, your aura, that is deteriorating. Twenties was. Twenties, uh, it is the growth is deteriorating because we grow up to a certain, we our growth almost comes to a standstill okay. after twenty twenty one years, right? Okay. That is what they mentioned. So there are different aspects. When it comes to skin care, I am telling uh, that uh, this uh, luster is deteriorating in thirty. Uh, 20 to 30 years and uh, uh, skin is deteriorating in 40 to 50 years okay. in the uh, in the fifth decade skin is deteriorating so we should do things to enhance anti-aging should be started from the uh, third decade and continued which is your 20s yes 20s yeah 20s okay yeah and uh, and uh, more anti-aging things should be followed in the 40s and I'm assuming the treatment is also different in like the 40s. Yeah. It's more so, intense. Yeah, that is basically categorized depending upon the doshic predominance. Wow. As we said before. Th there's no way that we can give generalized solutions in this particular podcast. This is probably a podcast just to increase people's Ayurvedic understanding. Yeah. Because I do feel that this is also missing from the internet. Because easy remedies work much better on the internet. But this is the actual science of Ayurveda. Yes. Okay. Wow. But uh, definitely, uh, Ranbir, we can't say that we, it's completely subjective. We can't bring in generalized solutions, keeping these factors in mind, hmm. being thoughtful of this, understanding this concept deeply. We can definitely bring in solutions that can benefit a particular age group. Okay. Like, as in, like, again, talking about a paste or uh, something you put on your skin, it yeah. can be built from a yeah, generalized Yeah, the ingredients can be selected accordingly and it can be processed in such a way that it will act in that particular age group. Usually we categorize a set of problems that can pop during the 20s, during okay. the 30s, during the 40s and okay. develop products accordingly. Um, I have a very straightforward question to you. You're from Kerala. Yes. Why do people in Kerala have such nice hair? <laughs> <laughs> like, is it is it coconut oil? Like that is being put? Not necessarily genetic factors. Okay. Biological environment. That is also in Ayurveda, we can say it's the... Uh, desha depending the the position of a particular place is also classified yeah. and uh, and uh, it is basically kabha predominant area kerala mm. it's it's actually locked in backwaters uh, with the, the geographical position of our uh, kerala also contributes to the hair compliment i would take it <laughs> <laughs> why is there much more of a prevalence of ayurveda in kerala i've noticed this also uh, Ayurveda is very much prevalent because of the authenticity. That means the uh, principles Ayurvedic formulators are sticking on to okay. uh, with the purity. They are uh, uh, strictly following the literature okay. for the medicine manufacture as well as the procedures. And there are some techniques developed in Kerala that uh, that is also contributing like Keraliya Panchakarma Chikilsa. That is also contributing much to the uh, uh, Ayurvedic aspects because strictly Ayurvedic practices are followed. Not only external, uh, internal pacification of uh, doshas, internal purification, detoxification. This is done through a particular system and that is, is, that is sticked on to. Okay. That is the uh, effect that uh, Ayurveda brings in and that's very prominently done in Kerala. That's yeah. Lots of my friends in Mumbai like go to Kerala for these like Ayurvedic breaks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they'll go there for a week. They'll have a bunch of processes done on their body. Yeah. A lot of which are related to purification and massages. Yes, yes, like yes. an Ayurvedic massage. Mm. Is that the it, technique it, you spoke about right it, now? It's it's only a physical uh, aspect of it. Uh, usually, snehana, that is uh, loading your body with unctuous, that is uh, uh, ghee related, medicated ghees are given to bring out the doshas to wow. a level. And then these messages are given to, again to um, uh, Abhyanga. Abhyanga is the treatment. It's a treatment only. It's not a massage. It is a scientific uh, pa pattern of massaging the body, which also brings out, brings the doshas to a particular aspect uh, point of the body. And then uh, Shodhana treatment, purifactory treatments like Vasti, Virajan. What are all these? Like Vastis what? are uh, medicated, um, uh, that is, a, a, the, it is the anal installation of medicated 
decoctions yeah, yeah. Oh. it's all directly purifies the gut yeah. and it has and uh, invisible effects when you, when when I, when i talk about invisible effect ayurveda uh, processes can can't be visible to you in a macro level as uh, charaka samhita it is mentioned that pratyaksham hi alpam apratyaksham analpam that means what is visible to you what is perceivable to you through your senses is very little and what is not perceivable to us as to human beings is vast hmm. so finding explanations to each and every thing is not possible just like we don't hear the sound more than 200 decibels or below to 20 decibels hmm. so there is a vast area of things we are unaware of we yeah. are not our senses are not capable of perceiving how long are you cleansed for like you should do it like once or twice a year i'm assuming hmm. it's actually uh, mentioned that uh, we have to focus on ritu sandhis okay. the, where the seasons meet the a, the the time period where the seasons meet are the time period which our body is more prone to diseases mm. where the immunity level is very low so depending uh, to uh, focusing on that in ritu sandhi that is the seasonal meets when the after summer suddenly the rain comes mm. so many diseases are popping up so the body should be prepared for that and this purgation should be purgative message um, uh, measures or uh, uh, this uh, shodhana treatment can be done once in 6 months once in 6 months yes okay wow to combat this immunity related issues it mm. works mm. yeah um I'm going to relay another experience I've had lately. So I actually had a shoulder injury just out of the blue. I went to my physio who first fixed my posture and then they did this particular kind of massage called lymphatic drainage. Uh where they massage you in a particular way mm. and she says that over time anyone who does a lot of weight training what happens is in weight training you always focused on creating a bit of a burn in your muscle mm. matlab you'll keep lifting the dumbbell till you feel that burn mm-hmm. okay now over time over like 5 10 years of doing this that burn you're feeling is basically lactic acid accumulating and then after you stop doing the set that lactic acid drains yes, away sir. but when something drains away bits of it are left residue of it is left mm. now that residue stays in your full musculature and eventually can cause problems Build in up. your life yes and i asked her okay so say if someone's done weight training for like 10 years and you think that they've not done good lymphatic drainage mm-hmm. what are some symptoms that you see so she's like a lack of a glow on the face pimples on the face again it's pitta dosh yes so i am as you and i'll also what i'll also say is um this lymphatic drainage thing it happens over 10 to 15 sessions i think but every time they give you a different kind of massage okay yes. and every time they'll tell you listen if you're getting chakkar if you're feeling giddy mm-hmm. you go home and sleep mm. so my first take was why would i get chakkar from a massage <laughs> like i'm i'm a man <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you actually feel a little giddy uh, and by the fifth session that i had they had told me listen today maybe your stomach will be upset so i said why why from a massage and it really had become upset yes. something was getting thrown out of my body yeah yeah uh, and the, what you said about the ayurvedic yes. massage also sounds yes similar only yeah yeah bringing in the doshas to koshta that is the elementary tract when you say that and then you poop oh. out like all yes, your yes, toxins yes. yes that's basically the concept they also said that you'll pee a lot <laughs> Uh, and uh, this used to happen after like every lymphatic mm-hmm. drainage mm-hmm. so all these things again that the world of modern medicine is discovering has mm-hmm. been there in our culture for a while yeah and i also feel you know i asked you about why kerala has such a strong ayurvedic culture mm. because generally the south of india is just more culturally connected to what india used to be mm. before invasions happened before yeah. the british etc etc it's just how uh the geographical nature of india is mm. i want to talk about hair now uh, a very basic question is is men's hair care and women's hair care different because i know that men deal with receding hairlines lots of guys my age yeah. again losing hair very rapidly mm. that's the biggest mm. insecurity point for a lot of guys in the 20s and yeah. 30s um my personal opinion is at the end of the day it's about confidence but if you can do something about your hairline try mm. so Are men and women's hair care guidelines different in Ayurveda? 
men and women hair care guidelines are not that different okay only the pattern of a uh, aspects uh, involving in the men and female hair growth patterns are different but the remedies are somewhat similar only and it's related to mainly your scalp I'm yes assuming. yes yes scalp okay. scalp is scalp is the main area and there are also uh, requirements that we should um, um, care the hair till the tip oh really yeah, okay yeah. that is mainly oiling of hair okay to just enhance the overall growth luster and uh, uh beauty of hair okay that is the external aspect but mm. uh, but it something has to af- uh, effect a uh, cause and effect uh, stop the hair fall enhance the uh, growth of baby hairs that has to be done in the scalp okay it, yeah that is uh, mainly ayurveda insists oiling some kinds of decoctions for the, yes space also and uh, and uh, hair care in the sense that is in the preventive aspect when it comes to the treatment aspect there are so many things uh, prescribed uh, maybe uh, a kind of uh, alopecia that can be treated with scratching with a particular leaf what yeah yeah that that that's the way to to stimulate to uh, ward off the clogged kapha dosh that is blocking the hair follicles to grow Wow, cup yeah. of water. Yes, water related. Wow, it's probably so, pus. It's not pus. It is a layer. We can say okay. the accumulation of cup of dosh. It's not 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 pus. Okay. It's just a layer that can block. Just like the mind gets clouded mm. in a similar way, there are a, a body get clouded due to the we can say that mucus, a kind of mucus. Okay. Not do not related to mucus that we see in the in our cuffs. Mm-hmm. the micro level of mucus forms can okay. block the hair follicles and uh, prevent the growth okay. of, of the hair from a generalized perspective generalized perspective yes okay. yeah. uh, another generalized perspective thing i want to ask you is at least for me and all my friends everyone who oils the hair has healthy hair like i've noticed this mm. i once went to give a talk in a very big corporate uh, firm uh, where they were related to hair products mm. and the product head came up to me and said hey ranveer we love your work we want you to be a ambassador for mm. our shampoos and conditioners mm. so i said okay ma'am mm. you know happy to and mm. all that she said yeah you know usually indians don't know much about true hair care mm. this whole thing about putting oil in your hair you, do you know that it's a big myth mm. and i was just looking at her like mm. i didn't say anything mm. because i use a lot of oil in my hair and yeah. i feel i have like very thick hair for my mm. age like yeah. as in especially uh when i see a lot of my friends i think the big difference is i've mm. i've oiled my hair very regularly since i was a kid yes and uh, that's what's actually prevented yeah. my hairline from receding yeah, yeah. and all that as very well very true and because nurturing your hair from a very young age can definitely attribute to the longevity mm. of the hair and the diet also that is also very oh, important okay, okay. Uh, i also <laughs> feel again big corporates don't want you to believe this yes because they don't have hair oil products they have shampoos and conditioners which can cause damage definitely toxins that Same. can penetrate into the scalp the mm. synthetic aspect the silicones uh, and so many numbers pgs thickening agents mm. these are affecting the hair strands as well as the hair follicles that will cause uh, hair effects negative effects on hair as well as the system mm. okay um when it comes to this oiling of hair like for me there's an oil called mahabhringraj tel yeah uh, i believe bhringraj is also an ayurvedic yes yes bhringraj this mahabhringraj is actually formulation as i mentioned before okay. it's a combination of so many medicines uh, we are also having neeli bhringadi keram that is a combination of uh, uh, neel uh, neeli means indigo okay uh, Br- brahmi uh, and uh, so many medicines are there with four kinds of milks used milk milk yes like milk coconut is milk. milk is used oh, okay. uh, coconut milk uh, cow's milk goat milk buffalo milk it mm. goes into the formulation it is actually a 4 to 5 day long process really uh, and it has to get absorbed totally without leaving any moisture that is the way it is done and this again you get to this do is, in, we stick on to this but you can only get access to this in ayurvedic resorts i'm assuming No, this is readily available. We have uh, the range in our brand. Oh, okay, yeah. really? Yes. Where you use milk within the product? 
milk is used but it will it end end product you won't feel if you won't see any trace of white milk okay. it is totally into it huh? you know in punjab like we put curd in our hair <laughs> like uh, it's a very family tradition <laughs> thing <laughs> uh to like soften it like yes, i remember yes. when i was a kid my grandmom used to put like curd in my hair and all that. curd is also an ayurvedic good good yes w- there is some logic of putting curd in your hair a curd yes that can soften the um it it's a fermented thing that is definitely that can definitely work as a conditioner oh, it this okay. a curd and all gives instant results there really? are, there can be two aspects when you talk about any care something that can give you an instant result that won't last long okay yeah and for and it can also contribute to a long term effect by nurturing some aspect okay and uh, when it comes to daily skin care uh, or hair care uh, that has to be more planned and uh, the formulation has to be so designed that it has deeper penetrating abilities okay to the skin as well as hair for the results to sustain does ayurved talk about using eggs on your hair at all no okay that this is, is a there. This is something that people do though. Yeah. They beat an egg and like put yeah, it yeah. in the hair. Yeah. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't messy. My, I wouldn't want my hair to smell like that. Yeah. Um does Ayurveda talk about like non-veg and eggs though? Yes, definitely. Okay. It's all about when uh, Ayurveda talks about these uh, hair uh, different kinds of meat, different really? kinds of eggs and everything in the um uh, food uh, food food there is a uh, uh, um, attributes regarding the food what okay. is the food used for what is what is what is its benefits health benefits so ayurveda uh, perceives food as maha aushadha aharam maha aushadham it is the best medicine mm. food is the best medicine so there are so many aspect uh, that this particular meat is meant for this um, uh, god's meat is for this and has health benefits as well Wow. So Ayurveda is vegetarian is a misconception. Do you want to talk a little bit about this non-veg aspect in Ayurveda? I believe huh. I mean the little I know is that and I know this because I have a mutton loving uncle of mine who always brings this up. They say that uh, mm. if you have a very bad fever mm. then some mutton soup or something is recommended according to Ayurveda. Yeah, yeah. Is that true? It's uh, I can I'll just uh, say about the facts that uh, Ayurvedic text has mentioned regarding the mutton you say. Uh, it but it's totally your choice. Uh, uh, Ayurveda sure. is not insisting that you should take this. Mm. It is just giving you this food has these attributes. Mm. Okay. This is beneficial for this. Okay. It's not commenting upon that uh, we should use these things. so uh, what they say is that um, uh, god is a very uh, what to say uh, it's very uh, energetic animal an energetic animal mm. and uh, it uh, it goes on eating um, fresh leaves mm. what they eat mm. uh, is fresh leaves and uh, it um, uh, it's very bouncy so that meat is very lakhu lakhu means very light easily digestible and yet um very uh, health enhancing really that's what they have mentioned about means it in text it's mentioned wow okay yeah. do they write about poultry or fish yes so many uh, mentioned uh, if, for example I, if i something gets to my mind is regarding the prawns prawns no uh, it's called chili chima in i uh, in sanskrit so it it is meant to uh, disrupt all the tridoshas Oh it, really? Yes, it can cause you. You might have heard many people's developing some kinds of sensi- sensitivity after having prawns yeah. and uh, allergies, skin reactions. Mm. It's mainly because it's mentioned in Ayurveda. It's tridosha kopak. That is, it 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 provokes tridoshas. Like it messes up your dosha. Yes, messes up your dosha instantly. So all in all, you shouldn't eat prawns according to Ayurveda. Not it. It is there. This concept is there. Uh, uh it it actually means you shouldn't stick on means you shouldn't go to uh, these uh, items while you selecting it's Damn. just giving it, it, information ayurveda will never say listen don't eat this it will just tell you listen it will mess up your doshas now you do what you want yeah wow that's all it's your choice do you have any other interesting non veg angles so many actually because uh, there are we we can't even relate to what kind of fish is this this because there are so many names with certain properties mentioned and also viruddhahara concept in ayurveda uh, where we can see that you shouldn't eat chicken with curd that's very prevalent here 
as in bad food combinations yes bad food combinations okay so exact what is the result we that i said we can't perceive it in a instance but these are causing damage to the gut and uh, other systems it in what the basis of virudhahara is toxicity short term as well as long term toxicity it might bring in that is the basis of virudhahara Uh, mixing with uh, there are certain uh, combinations mentioned in ayurveda where you shouldn't use that is some don'ts this combination sometimes they say that uh, with a particular kind of um, wood you should not mix a cooking item with that particular wood wood ladle damn yeah that is the kind of information we get about uh, virudhahara uh, usually we need to follow because okay. uh, this can uh, directly impact you in the level of toxicity is there a book or you know uh, an author who's written about all these things there are so many books actually okay. uh, these are actually uh, th- these knowledge we get while studying ayurveda because uh, it's in charak samhita in sharangadara samhita it's mm-hmm. a treasure of knowledge okay is regarding there regarding any... food we a book i'm not able to suggest i don't Get okay. in, yeah. Maybe, but maybe there I'm... are books available that can give you insights about the uh, dietary aspects of Ayurveda. Okay, Charak Samhita and uh, in general, in Ashtanga Hridaya, Charak Samhita, Sharanga Dara Samhita. Okay, so many texture uh, literatures available. Okay, uh, it's it's the basis of Ayurveda, okay. where the uh, principles, concepts, preparation of medicine, everything is talked about about diseases, their remedies. Okay. uh again this is one of those podcasts where there's too much information to take in for one episode which is why i don't think we're going so into depth with each topic because i think this is sort of an introduction to ayurved episode mm-hmm. for the audiences yeah uh i always ask the questions that i'm actually feeling like asking on the inside which is why i want to ask you about this whole ayurvedic psychiatry thing that was a part of your degree yes. as well uh masters your masters in ayurvedic yeah, psychiatry md md wow okay where do we even begin this topic like how do they actually start teaching you ayurvedic psychiatry yeah. maybe i would like to begin by saying psychiatry as far as i understand it is how you help treat someone's mental health but through medication right exactly so you give people mm-hmm. medicines that will help better their mental yeah. health uh, it's different from psychology in terms of with psychology you can never give medicines you can give You're them right. techniques yes uh, coping now, mechanisms yeah now i'll ask you about ayurvedic psychiatry yeah so uh, how do they begin teaching you the subject um uh, it's actually um uh, as as far as ayurveda is concerned each and every aspect of a disease is covered um along with the mind aspects also so mental aspects are there throughout ayurvedic literature when we talk about the diseases symptoms and all when we talk about the physical symptoms we talk about the mental symptoms as well even if it is for a fever so the psychology uh, aspect in ayurveda is throughout God. and uh, when we talk about psychiatric medicines uh, ayurveda has strictly laid down different techniques principles treatment patterns treatment solutions for um, psychiatric ailments from the schizophrenic spectrum of diseases really? that anxiety uh, sadness depression okay. ranging from the um, normal psychological issues to severe spectrum of psychiatric issues damn okay so let's take up anxiety i think it's one of the most common mm. problems yeah. uh, in today's day and age yeah. uh, what is the, the ayurvedic m- aspect of psychiatry uh, we uh, when you we can start by talking about the doshic predominance sure. it's vata pitta combination when we talk about psychiatric uh, anxiety so air and fire yes being more predominant in our mindset okay that is uh, as i told you dosha is in every aspect of your life mm. every every aspect element of your cell and the mind as well so uh, when there is an aggravation of vata pitta along with the rajo dosha there's raja, a fourth one raja tamas and My, when it comes to mind oh, okay, okay, you okay. have heard the three gunas mm. it's three gunas sattva raja and tamas mm. Sat, sattva is kapha predominant rajas is pitta predominant and tamas is kapha predominant 
Okay. Similarly, when it comes to mind issues, you have always heard about Satvic food, mm. Rajasic food. Even in Bhagavad Gita, there are uh, there are certain seventeen sets mentioned uh, as per Tridoshas in the seventeenth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So from uh, so that that aspect is also brought to Ayurveda while we are treating a, a, where we are looking into a particular disease. Uh, uh, in Ayurveda, we first look into the pathology. What is creating the disease, even if it is physical or mental or uh, psychological? So when it comes to anxiety, it's Vata, Pitta, and Rajas that is acting. Rajas is the kind of uh, uh, that that kind of panic feeling. Like very stimulated, yes, over stimulated, over stimulated. Okay, that that is attributed to Pitta, Raja, and Vata dosha in combination. So I'm assuming that the solution usually when it comes to the Ayurvedic way of dealing with anxiety is reduce the amount of food with Pitta as yes. well as reduce Rajasic food. Right. You are right. This is uh, the dietary restrictions we can say. Okay. But when it when it comes to medicines, uh, uh, apart from the food diet insisted, there is particular medicines designed so that this uh, the dosha, Vata, Pitta and Rajo Dosha can be alleviated. Okay. That is how medicines are designed that can alleviate this tridosha, uh, these kinds of doshas, okay. which is causing a particular symptom. Okay. Or disease. Um, what is Rajasik food? Like, can you give examples of Rajasik food? Rajasik food is usually um, uh, that that pakka explanation of uh, Rajasik food is mentioned in uh, Bhagavad Gita, okay. where that uh, Satvic food is, uh, uh, Rajasik food is uh, amla, which is exciting, which is hot. Amla spicy. means sore, sore, spicy, and uh, okay. uh, that is very uh, tangy. Okay. These are Rajasic foods. Okay. Okay. And when it comes to Satvic food, it is quite, um, uh, it's oily, sweet, and uh, very mild. I know this whole Satvic Tamsik thing because it's sort of related to meditation. Yes, so they tell definitely. us that when you want to go deeper into your meditation, you try increasing the amount of Satvic food you're eating. Yeah. Uh, which is what led me to giving up non-veg, etc. back mm. in the day. Mm. And I've seen that when my diet is full of raw vegetables, mm. raw fruits, mm. uh, my meditations also go deeper. Yes. So I'm assuming that that's a Satvic. And and also one, one certain thing that is a... Uh, uh, should be cared about is that we should not stick on completely to Satvic things. Okay. There should be a balance. Okay. Uh, not Thamsik, but it ha the Rajasik and Thamsik doesn't mean that uh, we should only take uh, these particular items. Like uh, uh, the three doshas, Satvic, Rajasik, and Tamas. Mm. It is not doshas, it is three gunas. Why is it mentioned if it is uh, if tamasic and uh, rajasic is bad? Why is is it mentioned as three gunas? Gunas you mean qualities, right? Okay. So why is it so uh, said so? Because these qualities are required. Uh, for instance, satvic uh, doesn't mean that we are all in in a my, my, my mind perspective, in a psychological perspective. It doesn't mean that it is very peaceful, calm, and uh, sorted. It, it also means doing the right things, being active in the right place. So for the activity, for any action or initiation, Pitta and Rajas is required. Oh. Rajas gives the drive. Mm. Right. So uh, everything has to be in a right balance. So being Satvic along with that amount of Rajas is required for the activity. And Tamas induces sleep peace and stability so what would be a tamasic food that is probably good for you in when it comes to food tamasic is not recommended food that, that is left over old degraded that, that that is the uh, three types of food explained in bhagavad gita not ayurveda okay so it's different yeah so you're saying Ayurveda. So, but that is the base where we can find that kind of food in ayurveda in ayurveda we say that uh uh Kabha, uh, it is all dependent. Food is always categorized depending upon the doshas, not the uh, sattva rajas tamo gunas. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it is related, but it's not a core part yeah. of Ayurveda. Yeah. Like oh, this rajas, sattva, and tamas when it comes, comes from to food. But when in the mental perspective, that is a core part only in Ayurveda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm.
So Raja's tamas, sattva, food is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Okay, but when it comes to Ayurveda, they talk about what's happening inside your body. Yes, yes. All right. Even that food is a. Uh, uh, we are breaking it down in the doshic basis. That is the. Got it. Okay. Um, what other aspects of Ayurvedic psychiatry, like, did you find very fascinating when you were studying it? Yeah, because um, uh, uh, I had actually researched in Bhagavad Gita for de- deriving the techniques of counseling. Okay. Yeah, that's what uh, that was a research topic uh, in uh, Ayurveda. So I was bringing in the concepts of I- uh, Bhagavad Gita into Ayurveda for Sattva Avajaya Chigilsa, enhancing the mind okay. of a person. Okay. So that is a part. But when it comes to medicines, psychiatric allopathic medicines are the most have the most dreaded side effects you're saying in modern day in psychiatry. modern days modern day psychiatric medicines okay. have uh, uh, the uh, these medicines have the most dreaded side effects as everybody knows okay but that is uh that is quite uh um, we can't actually skip that for that purpose ayurveda has great solutions because uh, 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 the psychiatric medicines actually work on the productivity of a person the person uh, they will uh, they the symptoms will be alleviated the psychiatric symptoms uh, will be alleviated but at the same time that individual's quality is compromised that individual is not able to work productively in the society okay actively work on that because he will take lifelong medicines and be in a in a vegetative state mostly without without able to do his work or without able to feel like doing things okay so this aspect uh is actually worked on when it comes to ayurveda it actually enhances the productivity of a person okay. along with treating the psychiatric conditions i think there'll be a lot of psychiatrists watching this very angry right now uh but i i i get where you're going with this yeah Uh, I don't know too much about uh, the allo- allopathy version mm. of psychiatry. Mm. I've never actually even spoken to a psychiatrist yeah. on the show. Maybe we will at some point. Um, but I think where you're going with all this is the fact that allopathy and the pharmaceutical industry is also a place that is constantly developing. They're constantly yes. going further, mm. and maybe the alternative, one of the alternatives, could be Ayurvedic. uh medicines used in psychiatry yeah uh i think what you're also saying is that there are a lot of medicines used in modern day allopathic psychiatry mm-hmm. which uh could blunt out some of your functions this is also some of the narratives that are there on the internet yes uh i don't i don't have any experience dealing mm-hmm. with like uh allopathy from mm-hmm. a psychological perspective yeah. mm-hmm. so i have nothing to say here yeah. but i'd love to know it from you in terms of yeah. say there is a medicine that reduces your anxiety mm. okay mm. so i think you're saying that it also will reduce your productivity if Definitely. your anxiety is reducing yes uh i am 100% sure that the medication you take mm. uh, some of it does have side effects but what is what is the ayurvedic solution here according yeah. to you so um it has uh, we can incorporate ayurvedic solutions in two aspects okay once uh, so many people are having allopathic medicines for psychiatric diseases so they can uh, consult an ayurvedic physician uh, especially ayurvedic psychiatrist if they if possible and get recommendations and prescriptions so that they can complement to the issues that are popping up due to the side effects of allopathic medicines okay. initially okay. and later on once the medicine gets effect on the person there is there are chances that the psychiatrist they are they have been looking uh, means they were they were uh, taking advices can taper the dosage and taper the dosage to some extent and uh, you know, for eventually they can switch on to the ayurvedic medicines are there modern day psychiatrists who are open to ayurvedic psychiatry uh many because okay. uh, nimhans is the national institute for mental health sciences bangalore it is the most reputed um, research center and medical college in india so uh, it has integrated the concept of ayurveda with psychiatry uh, uh, neuroscience neuroscience psychiatric departments they have now integrated ayurveda 
knowing the benefits yeah um, so they are open uh, people are more aware because psychiatrists are totally aware of this side effect part so they are also looking to some alternatives right for uh, coping the side effects of yeah. the medicines we had an expert in molecular biology recently on the show dr neeraj rai hmm. uh, he confirmed a theory that i had uh my theory was that in the world of plants which is also ayurved uh there are too many secrets as well as solutions now ayurved or chinese medicine or shamanic medicine over the centuries have figured out how to use plants to a large degree yeah and generally the world of pharmaceuticals actually studies the same plant medicine tries understanding what is the active molecule in this particular plant that's causing this effect mm -hmm. and then tries mimicking that molecule in a lab in many cases of mm -hmm. creating medication yeah i think that's what the world of modern science also needs to go that mm -hmm. um uh, we need to kind of break down ayurved a lot more because this is an ancient science yeah. everything that ayurved says mm -hmm. seems to be working for the modern day human yeah therefore there needs to be more research done on ayurved to understand it more deeply mm -hmm. and to back it mm -hmm. by the stamp of western science evidence. even more evidence yeah. Yeah. yeah uh but again it's an ongoing process yeah i think some of it has been proven even dr huberman keeps talking about a lot of ayurvedic stuff mm. but it's just that's the surface i think yes. i think the world only knows ashwagandha mm. right now mm. um and they know haldi <laughs> turmeric <laughs> turmeric whatever yeah uh do you want to talk a little bit about these two these are very hot topics from an international uh, point of view point of view yeah. yeah and these are the two things that the west knows and knowing the west they're going to deep dive and get to know about all yeah. this other stuff that people like yourself already know mm. so where do you want to begin talking about let's Let's talk about haldi. Yes, turmeric. Turmeric, uh, is has been a only a one of one of a few in one of the ingredients, uh, thousands one of the thousands of ingredients in Ayurveda. So haldi has so many benefits, herb benefits, etc. But um, now uh, curcumin is the active ingredient that. Uh, Uh, that is uh, alleviating pain in enhancing immunity curbing autoimmune diseases this uh, curcumin has uh, found to be uh, uh, well researched in this so but uh, as per ayurveda there is a different approach like uh, taking a holistic part it's not about extracting a particular ingredient to work on a particular thing because um ayurveda says that as i told you before also there balance of formulations in the same way if we extract a particular ingredient and uh, uh, make it work on a particular thing there are certain issues that may come along with that so even if it is naturally extracted uh, if a particular ingredient has to work for a long term that may have some side effects okay. so blindly we can't follow a single drug especially a single drug because in ayurveda single drug when i say single drug it does mean raw material raw herbal material so uh, depending on a single drug is not the way of ayurveda it gives everything in combinations okay so um. the extraction part of uh, curcumin is something different from what ayurveda prescribes okay got it and also long term usage of ashwagandha uh, ayurveda doesn't insist long term usage of any particular medicine or any particular herb even if it is a food material uh, it only prescribes certain materials that can be used day on a daily basis for example green um like uh, mudgada green gram honey these uh, materials these food items are prescribed in ayurveda saying that this can be taken as long as you can okay that is restricted to six or six numbers as in there's only six food items food items that uh, ayurveda insists that you can take it lifelong rest all are conditional okay and all the herbs that we are talking about long term intake of a particular thing can um you have to stop when the desired effects come there is a condition called satmya in ayurveda that means when the body gets used to a particular item 
okay and uh, once you stop that the capacity of the body to generate that particular effect naturally is t- tends to deteriorate then body tends to lose that capacity of doing that for the body so okay. particular drug we uh, is not uh, as such can't be taken for a long time it should be taken for a desired period of time and then we need to uh, stop using it okay. that is the way it works and now the nutraceutical industry um, projecting these things is actually a very concerning topic what is nutraceutical nutraceutical is nutrition plus pharmaceutical that okay. is nutrition in the form of food supplements we get got it uh, nice. there are so many uh, glutathione for uh, for example we can say glutathione is very very popular these days for making your skin fairer hmm right uh, uh, um, because it were it was taken by few celebrities or uh, public figures or in the glamour world before of 3 to 5 years before but now the masses are so aware and this mass uh, demand has uh, made nutraceutical or nutrient supplement industry make glutathione supplements and every every one or two years there's a new wave ingredient of something coming in yeah. but you know uh, the the danger of uh, these kinds of items these these individual ingredients are used in nutraceutical industries without any guidelines hmm. it comes as it comes in the food supplement range hmm. uh, any company can with an fssi license can introduce a new product saying it is a nutrient supplement what? and what is the future of this people taking collagen glutathione melan- melatonin sub- as supplements for a long term mm. where where are the studies mm. do you have any studies or where where which is the source of this ingredient how this is processed right and um, when we people usually search on google and they say there are no reports of any side effects mm. but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have any side effects Yeah. So this kind of ingredient based food supplements popular in market is actually a scam. It 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 doesn't fall in the pharmaceutical range. So there are less rules and regulations to be followed. Got it. I think even uh, Dr. Huberman at least I remember he had one episode on melatonin and so many people that I've met in Mumbai mm. uh if we ever discussing sleep problems which is a very common thing for people are it. Yeah. Uh there's always someone who say oh why don't you take a melatonin supplement? and i remember huberman saying that he himself doesn't take it just because there isn't that much research done on it so it's mysterious what it does yeah. all they know is that even pre pubescent kids like uh, people i mean humans under the age of 13 uh, it can cause some damage i can't remember what the damage was but i think it's something related to mental function yes yes it it can cause fatigue lethargy and uh, i i think it was early onset of puberty is caused therefore there is a shift of hormones therefore that could mean that in adults who take melatonin uh, there could be a shift of hormones and you don't know what that shift of hormones can be yeah. um rather than you know taking external hormones to fix a problem try getting to the root of the problem yes, why are you yes. not sleeping well yeah. do you have anxiety okay yeah. there is yoga to deal with anxiety Definitely. there are breathing techniques to deal with yeah. anxiety yeah. there is meditation to deal with anxiety uh try those things so why do you want to put something in your body uh, which is also my argument for ashwagandha i remember mm. when i started youtubing 8 mm. years ago ashwagandha was a very big deal on the indian internet yeah. for two reasons men sexual health and bodybuilding yeah I and also it curbs cancer related issues post cancerous stage okay yeah convalescent spirit ashwagandha is widely given Really? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know this. Yes, but, uh, even uh, the big drug companies who are into Ayurveda uh, deals with this in the uh, allopathic hospitals. We seldom know this kind of a product exist until we get a prescription from a, a cancer patient. After oh yes, this is an Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, I haven't seen this before. Mm. This drug, this patented drug medicine is not. Uh, I'm not aware of. So, I was actually surprised to see this kinds of medicine the prescription. So you're saying that whenever there is an ayurvedic ingredient in any medicine hmm. or in any supplement hmm. ideally don't take it. No. I am telling about the particular ingredient that is extracted collagen glutathione melatonin supplements. 
Okay. So people don't know because I myself are I, I'm doing research on developing some nutraceutical nutrition uh, supplements that can actually help the people. Okay. Without causing any side effects. I think you're saying that there's many companies that aren't doing enough work in yes. research. Yes, it's not only about the companies, Ranveer. It's about the trend that is coming in. Okay. People are otherwise businesses are are forced to get into that trend mm. to make utilize of this trend. Mm. But they only know some suppliers, random suppliers. They said, "Ah, yes, collagen powder is there. This much is the cost. So this and this mix it, okay. and then you make gummies, collagen supplement powders." But where does this collagen come in? Marine collagen is available. From where? How is it this extracted? Mm. What synthetic process or chemicals are done are uh, are undergone for extracting and processing these things? Right. It's unknown. Yeah, it's this whole thing about again Dr. Neeraj Rai, the molecular biologist on the show. He said that people don't even know the kind of stuff that's going into their bodies today. just through the food just through the vegetables you buy just through the meat you buy there's a lot of stuff going into your body if you're living in the modern day yeah so it's always best to stay natural and that's what actually brings me to the end of this conversation with you what i've learned through this episode is one mm. ayurveda is deeply subjective mm. and then there's different degrees of generalization so all the home remedies we see on youtube are the largest form of generalization and it may mm. or may not work for you yeah um Rather than that, go for formulations from ethical Ayurvedic companies. Mm. If you truly wish to deep dive into Ayurveda, mm. and you know, if you're not going to go to a Ayurvedic doctor yourself, yeah, which yeah. I think is most human mm. beings, honestly, everyone wants a yes. quick fix. Yes. Uh, which was the whole point of yeah. bringing you on the show. I wanted to like celebrate someone like you who's celebrating the subject. Yeah. So, Doctor Nena. Yeah. Is there any signing off note you have when it comes to this subject of Ayurveda? Yeah, I just wanted to add something when in your last point. Sure. Uh, with regard to the uh, more than people getting aware because they have little awareness or knowledge of what is actually going into a product. I would suggest an ethical solution from the companies that. does this mm. it is the this solution is from there we we need to start the solution from there the products that are uh, that can actually benefit human kind mankind should come in this has to be very thoughtful very strong research and development has to be there knowing the very uh, smallest ingredient we are putting into product has to be very uh, clear the source has to be clear, uh, known and the process has to be well understood and then you have to use it in the product otherwise we can't make a public aware uh, of what they see in the label or what they perceive to advertisements or what they understand from uh, just knowing the company what is the the real issue or the core issue has to be corrected from the businesses mm. that bring in the products it should be more oriented towards the human good <laughs> understanding things thoughtful yeah. sustainable to the nature this mm. is what i think yeah you know i think this trend has hit america honestly uh, there is a range of organic products in america mm. i would like to believe that um i also think things like sustainability are focused upon them when it comes to businesses i'm waiting for the day all indian businesses talk about sustainability talk about honestly talk about organic truth yeah. because i don't see too much of it happening today and i don't know if it will happen which is exactly why businesses like yours have to be celebrated yes uh it's a much more difficult game you're playing uh honestly i i know as a business person how difficult it can be for you when you're facing all these people who are taking shortcuts and probably doing the unethical thing but uh, when people like you take off in the world maybe it'll actually change the world i hope so so that's it for today's episode Doctor Naina, thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you for like teaching us so much about Ayurveda. It's the age of consumer education, and that's what I hope people gain through today's podcast. Thank you so much, Ranveer. Thank you. So that was the episode for today. Please tell me what you thought of it. Make sure you support Doctor Naina. Make sure you support Vanora Organics. Remember, they're using a lot of advanced technologies to build out this particular brand. It's extremely difficult to actually bring back ancient sciences. to the forefront in today's day and age where massive conglomerates massive multinationals are actually giving you products which are built 
from the other side using chemicals, using these stabilizers and these bases for their creams and their gels and their shampoos and the soaps. Make sure you support young Indian entrepreneurs. Make sure you support Indian entrepreneurs who are doing the right thing. This was our Ayurved special with Dr. Naina. I'll also be linking my personal favorite products from her range. It's the Rejuvenita that uses the advanced whitening technology in order to even create the product. Trust me, you need to experience these products to understand what real Ayurved is as compared to the slightly false Ayurved that's sold to us in the form of skincare and hair care products. This was only our first episode on Ayurveda. We're going to be covering it in a lot more detail in future episodes. So keep supporting TRS and make sure you check out all our health and cosmetics oriented episodes because we have an entire library built out. Ranveer and the team will be back very soon.